What's up guys, in this video I'm going to be explaining properties, how they work, and how we can script and alter them inside of our code in Roblox Studio. In order to get started, we first need to see what properties are. And the best way to explain this I've come across is that properties are really just attributes that define various characteristics of objects. Like, take this spawn location as example. If I were to select this part right here, you can see on the right in this properties window, there's all these different properties or attributes as I was just talking about that define the characteristics of this part. And by the way, if you don't see this properties window, you can go up to the view tab right up here and then enable the properties window right up here on the top left. Other than that though, you can see all these different properties change the way this part is inside of our game. Like if I were to change the brick color over to yellow, you can see that now the spawn location is yellow. And if I were to change this back to medium stone gray, you can see that it's back to where it was. There's also the cast shadow one, or if I turn that off, you can see it no longer casts a shadow and you can change the material to whatever one you want to. There are all these different properties that you can change around. And the fun part is that we can change and alter these properties inside of scripts. So let's go into server script service once again and add in a script unless you already have one from the past few episodes. And what I didn't talk about in the variables tutorial is that we can actually add instances into our variable. So if I were to say local spawn location equals to game.workspace.spawn location. So what game is that this is what everything inside of your game is inside of. All of these different built-in services right here are a child of the game. That means that the workspace, the players, lighting, replicated storage, all these different things are inside of the game. And so we can say game.workspace to find our workspace inside the explorer right here. And anything inside of the workspace we can then use by putting a dot right here. So you could say that game is a parent of workspace. And a parent is an object that contains or holds other objects. You can think of it sort of like a container that you can have one or more child objects inside of it. A parent object can be really anything inside of your game, whether that be the game itself, workspace, or even a part like spawn location. And a child in Roblox Studio scripting is inside another object. So anyways, now we have the word spawn location, which is equals to our spawn location inside of workspace right here. We can go ahead, drop down a few lines, and we can alter the properties of our spawn location inside of our script just by writing out spawn location dot. And you can see all of these different properties that come up just right here, but there, we're just gonna be changing the more common ones, such as transparency right here. And the transparency takes a number value, which means that we can do anywhere from 0 0.1 all the way up to one or 10, however many you want to do. However, one means that it is completely transparent. Zero means it is not transparent whatsoever. You cannot see through it. So I'm just gonna leave this at 0.5. And if we went ahead and ran the game real quick, you can see that our part right here, the spawn location is now semi-transparent, which is perfect because that's what we told the code to do. So inside of our script, we can also write spawn location dot brick color equals to brick color dot new. Now we can put a brick color number in here, which can be any color value, which I think goes up to 216, if I believe. Otherwise, it's 255. Keep on forgetting the max value. Or you can just put quotation marks inside of here and choose any color that you want to. I'm going to be choosing lime green. I think that's a nice bright color. And if we run the game one more time, you can see that now not only is it more transparent, but it is also lime green. So these are just a few of the properties that you can change. There are even more properties that we can change such as spawn location dot anchored. This will make it so the part can be moved around and that physics can be applied to it. So the anchored property is a boolean value or it takes a boolean value, which means that it can be either true or it can be false. 
So if you want the part to have physics, you can set the anchored property to false. Otherwise, if you want the anchored property to be set to true and the part will not have any physics and it'll just be stuck where it is, then you can leave that to true, just like this. It's the same thing with the good old can collide property right here. This will also take a true or false value. If we set can collide equal to false, it will fall through anything that is on top of anything. It will just go through anything. That's why if you have anything set can collide to false, it is always good to make sure that you also set anchored to true. That way it won't move around, but the player can still go through it. Same with other objects as well. So these are some basic properties that we can change and alter inside of our script. Another cool thing is that with variables, you can even hold properties inside of variables. So if I were to say local green equals to brick color dot new lime green, we can swap out spawn location dot brick color will now be equal to green, just like this. I'm just going to get rid of a few of these other lines of code so it's not so distracting. So you can see that we can even use variables to hold different properties. This can even be equal to true or false. And we can say dot anchored equals to green. We'd have to change the variable name, but... And another cool thing that we can do is that we can print out properties. We can print spawn location dot anchored. And that's going to print a boolean of whether or not it's anchored. We can print spawn location dot transparency. And that will just print out whatever the transparency is. And if we open up the view tab and open up the output and then go over to the home tab and click on run one more time, you can see that's going to print out true because it is anchored and zero because that's what the transparency is for. So that's how we can alter and change properties inside of Roblox Studio. If this tutorial helped you out, make sure you like, subscribe, and comment down below. Don't forget to join the Discord server. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.